then we'll go on Facebook as well. Morning <laughs> minutes, not with Mark, as you can see. I've got the special guest, Lisa, which is so much more exciting. I like and my new name, no, no, Novak. <laughs> Novak. All right, we're good. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Minutes with myself, Michael Bergio, and the real Novak, Lisa <laughs> Novak. <laughs> the real oh boss. God, he's going to kill you. <laughs> the creator, the founder, the brains <laughs> behind the business. <laughs> uh, we got a really good topic this morning. It is yeah. uh, property not sold, the cleanup. Uh, this is basically in a nutshell when an owner has been on the market with another agent, they haven't sold and they're a bit of limbo where they don't know what to do because it's a, one of those things in real estate, you can't really try before you buy. You, you can do all the research you've got, you can do all the, read all the reviews everyone's got and you go with that agent but sometimes it doesn't click, they're not what they're, or they're not what they're um, talked up to be and you've just want to make that change. We've had a great example with the property ourselves, but Lisa, yeah. talk us through just that shift, the mindset of the client and how do you do it? Can you do it? What's the deal? Yeah, so I, I get called in a lot actually. So not just me personally, but our agency, right? Because when we started to build this whole digital presence a few years ago, people thought we were crazy. Um, our staff yeah. thought we were crazy. You know, and at that stage, we were going through uncharted waters, but we knew that we were getting traction from it and we knew that it was attracting a different vibe to what was on those property portals. So what started happening, not not so much now, but certainly over the last year, I would say, Burge, wouldn't you? Yeah, um, I reckon the last sort of six months, especially with COVID, with all the talk of COVID sort of been, a, um, it's, made a, it's made a lot of, I don't want to say blessing in disguise, but it definitely has for some businesses and given a lot of people the shift, but it's definitely changed the client's mindset of people yeah. when you said social media, like what, or online um, with that type of aspect, they were like, they didn't really, oh, they didn't have the, I don't know, they didn't no care one understood as much. It because no, understood, no one yes. understood it because no one had done it, okay? Yep. So, but what we're talking about today is, if you're the seller that has been on the market with another agent for some time and that agent hasn't had success doing your property, what are they going to do now over and above putting you onto those property portals? Because what I'm finding now is I'm getting caught. Yesterday I had three calls, Verge, three calls from vendors that had been on the market with other agents for a significant amount of time. I'm talking three to six months and had yeah. no success. And then they've gone back to the agent and said, well, what now? And the agent's like, um... Give me more money, lower going. your price. Because um, look at the three options. Lower when the you're price, on... guys. Yeah. Yep. All right. It's... So, But the thing is, is that the vendor doesn't want to sell cheaply. They're not having a garage sale. They want to sell their beautiful property for, you know, they've got a certain expectation in their mind or they've got a certain price that they have to yeah. sell for. Okay, because that just comes out cost neutral. I've literally just come off the phone from someone who said that exactly that to me right now. I don't care if I don't sell for a premium. I just want to come out so that I've paid my loan back and that I've paid your commission. Okay, so what what is the agent doing that's over and above? Now, here's the interesting conversation, right, where we built up these social media channels and guess what? It is a brilliant tool to use over and above those property portals when they've been done there and they're tired and the whole campaign is stale we can then build our own digital campaign that most agents and agencies just can't do Burge. they yeah. can't but do it back a couple of steps if they're so just so we get to where they get to that stage so they're on the market with the other agent there's a couple of things with most agency agreements you're basically locked in for 60 days, 90 days, 120 days. Yes. So if you are past that period and, you've, and you're like, what can I do? It is very simple to change agencies. Now, there's a couple of things. It's realistically just a letter of termination to that agent. And you, there's not much, that, so that's the paperwork. Then in most cases, 
let's just say because a, a client would be worried about, well, what about the photos I've paid for? What about the the um, the floor plan? What about the real yes. estate.com ad? A lot of people don't know, realize you've paid for those photos. A lot of the times they're your photos. They can be reused. And the other thing is real estate.com do a deal with transferring agents. So you don't have to pay that full cost. Again, a lot of people are scared. They're going to be hit with the marketing this all is, again. This is this is really significant. Guys, if you're watching and you are one of these people that is stuck in a rut with another agent, that campaign's gone stale and the agent's asking you to take less money for the property, you are 100% right, Burge. You can reuse those photos 99.9% .9 of the time, those photos are yours. However, I've just yeah. gone through this because I've just taken over a listing that's been on the market for a significant amount of time with two other agents. I don't want to use those photos. Yes. They're now stale. We have to remask the whole campaign and we've got to rebuild it again. And this yep. is where the industry gets stuck because it they does. don't know how to do it. Okay. I have a now long background in marketing. What's that? Our, their, our plan B is their plan A. So when pla their plan A doesn't work, they don't have the B and the C. So this right. is where it comes in. Spot on. So I'm always saying that, you know, if it, obviously, a, you know, a vendor is looking at one, two, three agents when they're looking at listing their property. I always say to my vendors or my clients at that stage, please ask the other agents that you're interviewing what their fallback plan is for you should their only plan not work okay because we all get on the market and we're all excited and the marketing looks amazing and we think the price guide's all great and then all of a sudden two weeks into a campaign we've got no buyers coming through all right and it's very difficult for an agent to step back who is used to doing the authentic style of marketing right so getting onto realestate.com beautiful photography drone shots great floor plan domain and then nothing happens and then what do they do they hit a wall yeah all right so you've so what do we do guys that's over and above that we would then remask the whole campaign so we'll burn the whole campaign yeah. and, and what do you mean by that again. new photos make a big difference at different angles um yeah. even just having Tweaking the address, some, something we do a lot of the time with, let's just say if you've got a property 11B Clyde Road, which we had, don't market the 11B. A lot of people don't like the B. Have it as 11 or just just tweak around, be creative. Like that's the thing where people go, well, I've been with that agent for three months. What are you going to do different? What can I do different? Because a lot of the time they're at that position where it's either spend another five, 10 grand in marketing or drop the price. So these are little well, things that can be them. done. Yeah, that's, that, that's all that, that, That's the industry, right? Yeah, so the industry exactly. hits a wall at two, three months and says, what do I do now? Um, we need to meet the market price or we've just got to spend more money on marketing. There aren't any other options. Guys, listen, there are other options. Change agents, okay. that's the option, we, you can. Change agents, we do, we, we, we often will do the cleanup after other agents. I sold a property in Beacon Hill, Burge, it had been on the market with another agent, another lo well-known local agent, yeah. and it had been sitting on the market for four months. The vendor yep. had spent close to $10,000 in marketing Okay, and then it just she, she called me and she said, Lisa, I see you all over Facebook. Can you come talk to me? We had that property sold within seven days. Yeah, not just and for, for not more, for, like they had lowered the guy change and you got it for more. So change yeah. is good and it's not hard. That's a key message of today. So if you've just tuned in, hey, Luke, how are you going? Um, a couple of comments adapt or die. You need to build your social media over time and be consistent. That's key. Um, I don't think any agent is on social more than Novak Crew. Thank you. But back to your um, second comment there, Luke. You got to build it over time, consistent. I know, especially with you, Lisa. For the first six months, year, you thought you were crazy, wasn't working, and then it just happens. It's it's like everything. You need, if like to be a professional, you say you've got to be doing it for ten thousand hours before you're a professional. Think of it that way with social media. You've got to do it for ten thousand hours before you get a result. It's not about Correct. doing a post it didn't happen. gratification. That's absolutely right. And it didn't happen quickly. It happened suddenly. And I think that's significant to point out was that, 
you know, it's like um, uh, you go to the gym and yeah. you go to the gym for a week and you look at yourself in the mirror and go, I don't understand. Like I have not lost weight and I didn't get fit. This didn't work. Right. People do the same thing with social media. Um, whereas I, if you go to the gym and over three to four months, people slowly start saying, you look good. You look yeah. weight. You look fit. It takes time. I'll tell you where people head, head screw themselves is because they're used to social media being instant as in from the consumer point of view, you put the post, um, you put the post from your, when you post, you put a post up, you get 10 likes or you get five likes, but yeah. You get it straight away or you get nothing. So they, they're thinking that instant. A hundred percent. But when you're, when you're building a, com a profile, when you're building the brand, it doesn't happen like that. So you're used to doing it, your social pick at the beach, you get all your results straight away or nothing. But yeah. when it's on the company brand profile, it's longer, it's different. The merits are still sort of there. It, you get the, the best 100%. action 100%. straight away, but you're not getting the the selling action that you're getting now that's straight right. away. So it's a weird no. mindset. you just got to flip that switch. That's exactly right. And look, guys, today we're talking about um, has your campaign gone stale with the other agent? And if it has, you have the choice to move to another agent. We have done so many cleanups. I'm currently yeah. doing about a half a dozen now. Yesterday I had three calls for an appraisal for um, uh, sellers that are currently on the market with other agents that have noticed that I'm standing out with my social media and they've gone to their agents and said, can you please do what that girl's doing? We yeah. want that. And they're and saying, they're saying no, do that sort we of don't market. do that. Right? So um, it, it, is, it, it is a massive point of difference for us. Um, but I, just what you mentioned before, Burge, is really important. A lot of people don't realise you guys own the photos most of the time. 99.9% .9 of the time, they're yours. Take them with you. You can reuse them. We can repurpose them. If it's me on the job, I likely won't use them because I'm quite meticulous yeah. with burning those campaigns and rebuilding them again. Um, and, um, and then the other thing is the relist on the portals. So I took over a listing that's been on the market with, for a significant amount of time with two other agents and went to Domain, knocked on their door, and they said, oh, we'll just relist for free. Yeah. For free. They didn't even need to spend any money. Um, and that's what you, will do it at 50% for the relist. And that's what the owner doesn't know. And that's and, get, and I get that because the agent's not going to tell them, oh, you can leave me really easily and you can leave me with very little cost. The contract can be reused. So the cost is very minimal. So that's, that's the key right. message to get out today. And you can always have, let's say you're not within the, um, you're still within the exclusivity period have your lawyer look at the agreement make sure you are locked in before right and advice. very simple thing so great that's a big advice yes yeah. can i can i it also is. just say seriously if you are a seller and you've gone to that agent to say mr agent i'm not happy can can i get out of the agreement and the agent turns around and says no really you know yeah. i can't even imagine holding a client into an agreement that they're simply not happy with when you're selling their property, when you've given it a really good go. Exactly. And people misre misread the agreement. Now, the agreement, if it is for 90 days, you don't have to be on the market on realestate.com for 90 days. Yes, if the property, if it's an exclusive sales agreement, yes. If the property is sold within that period, that they're entitled to their fee. But you can withdraw it from the market. You, you can terminate it in that way, but you can't sell it. But there's also, I've had a couple of clients when they're within a week or two of it terminating and they're just like, they've, we're whipping a dead horse over there. Terminate yeah. it. By the time you sort of can get up and running, then you exchange after that period. So be mindful. It's just because your agreements for 90 days, 120 days does not mean you have to give access for them to show the property for that long. Does not yeah. mean they have the right to market your property for that long. All it means is if it's the property is exchanged with a buyer during that period, they're entitled to their fee. So if a property, if you start marketing with another agent prior and you exchange after that period, you don't have to. So really get the advice from watching this video, speak to your lawyer, yes. get the second opinion. You're not as locked in as you are. I and agree. Some, yeah, and sometimes making that, that change. Guys, 
it, it, it's critical that you actually, even if you're out of your agency agreement, it's critical that you still notify the agent in writing. You must yes. notify the agent in writing and it just needs to be quite a simple, straightforward email that says effective immediately or effective on blah, blah, blah date. I wish to terminate this agreement. Okay, and now just one other thing. Sorry, I know yep. this is a really good topic actually. This yep. actually does need a little bit more airtime because this is a big topic and this is particularly a big topic at the moment because days on market have been significant. A lot of people have been on the market all the way through COVID, right? And um, where days on market were just blown out for obvious reasons and they're still sitting on the market, got, scratching their heads going, why is every property around me selling? Now, when we bring properties over, and we redo campaigns and then we get you out onto digital platforms, um, it is such a speedy process. Yeah. Okay, I've just brought a property on now. Um, it is the turnaround times that we, um, that, that we have would make your head spin. Yeah, same because day. Because a lot of the things that day, we do. Real quick. Yeah, so I, I literally got an agency agreement at the end of last week. Um, I've already got a property, new photos have been done, it's all over my social media. Um, I've already taken buyers through the first open homes today, signboards being installed, um, virtual furniture's come back. Like it would make your head spin because a lot of the stuff we do is in-house. It's yes. in-house, right? So we have our own in-house media department. Um, we have our own in-house digital department. We do everything here off our iPhones like we're doing now. And we've got our own in-house studio. We, we shoot all of our own digital content. The turnaround times are insane. I can have your property all being well, contract in, signed agreement, out of agreement with the other agent. I can have you on the market that day. And the, a key thing for owners to realise as well, which I know sometimes a bit of a snag for them making that jump. Now, they've, they've been told by the other agent, they've got this one buyer, super keen. They're dragging them along, for, waiting for finance, waiting for all this crap. And what we can do as well, in the sales agreement with the new agent, if you want, you can might you can say if this buyer buys it, no com is paid, so you don't have to do double com. Because yeah. I see it all the time, an owner will be waiting one, two, three weeks for this buyer that they don't even know is real, and because that agent's using it, it could be genuine. Yeah. Time it would be, but you can if you're really that worried about it, because you can have it. Mind we do it a lot. You minus it if Joe Blog buys it out when I entitled the fee, it goes to the other agent. Yeah. Because we're that confident with uh, the new database, with the social media, with everything else, we will attract new buyers. So we're not, and we, a lot of the time we will say, if a buy, if an old buyer comes along, we'll do a deal. So the new agent, if you're an agent out there, don't close your mind off or the deal off to excluding them. Because think about it, that owner has put in three months, six months, looking for those buyers, already spent money. You don't just want to say, no, nah, they're, they're dead to us. You need to incorporate them in. And a lot of the time, we're able to use that buyer with another buyer we've generated for more money for the client. So you've got Absolutely. to have those more technical tweaks. Yep, agreed. Um, okay, guys, I think that is a wrap. Um, really good topic, really, really good topic. So for those of you guys that have just tuned in right at the end, we've been talking out about the big cleanup. So other agents that couldn't sell the property and then it's come over to us and we've sold it pretty quickly um, and not cheaply because we've thought outside of that, you know, of that authentic style of marketing um, and, and, and then some, right? Yep. There's so many other things that we do that we are so good at doing um, over and above social media. So we're phenomenal at remasking a campaign. Um, you know, we really are. I can't think of another agency in the mm. industry that is as good as doing it. I'm not blowing our own trumpet, but, you know, I've been uh, more and more and more now I'm getting called in to do appraisals from all over Sydney. I was just chatting mm. with Mark last night saying, I don't know how to service all these guys, um, you know, all over Sydney because they weren't able to sell with, you know, their, their local agent, the generic agent, who then kind of hit a wall um, with marketing yeah. after a few months. Interesting topic. It is. And the key thing to listen through is the process and the technical side of switching an agent. It's not hard. It's not expensive. And it can be done quickly. And I think yeah. that's a wrap. That's it. Guys, Thank have an Thank you very awesome much. Day. Great to have you on. Thanks, Lisa. Well, thank Bye. you.